What's up guys, my name is Shenzi and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do another landscape painting. Uh, I'm just in the backyard and uh, there's several different spots that looks fairly interesting and have you know lots of greens and warms and cools between the pinks and greens and bluish. Uh, a lot of, uh, I would say brown color, but it's much less saturated uh, in the backgrounds versus the more saturated flowers and leaves in the foreground, which is that's created a really nice contrast in terms of this warms and cools, right? So um, yeah, let's get started. Okay guys, I'm just getting some of my paint out. Uh, normally I don't really care about the branding or the name, uh, you know, for specific paint, as long as, you know, got my primaries, I got a couple of secondaries. Uh, I use a couple of phthalo colors, the phthalo green, phthalo blues, uh, you know, just help the intensity of certain uh, color I'm trying to get to. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, you know, cadmium color is always nice. You know, give this really nice intensity of red and orange and yellows. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna use a little bit different. I wouldn't say techniques, but um, I think I'm gonna paint those flowers. They're pinkish with a lot of greens uh, versus this very muted red in the background, which is the fence and. Uh, in the light side, it's a lot more warms, and I see a lot more cools between the the rocks on the ground. So you know, when I squint my eyes, I see the pinkish, the bluish. You know, it's, it's a little grayer, but it's a little more purplish blue versus the reds on the ground, which is you know that's where those uh, rocks are. Um, so the dominant color is going to be reddish and green, green idea versus the reds and the much less saturated backgrounds. So I'm gonna start with a very warm uh, underpainting, which is it's very warm. I'm gonna keep it light and warm, which is a little more pinkish and a little more alizarin. I uh, like that, kind of maybe a little yellowish and a little lighter still. Yeah, I'm gonna just lay in some um, strokes. Um, I'm just gonna really dark strokes because I'm gonna cover it anyways and I wanna make it very distinguished ideas of what I'm painting. So, um, so I have a little bit, maybe green leaves that peeking through on the left side of the canvas and I got a flower. The roses are here and, and there's one here. I like that a lot, maybe that's gonna peek through and uh, gonna cut it off right here and then the shadows are here so we gonna something like this and then there's a groups of roses that we want to focus on just you know different variety of shapes different shapes of groups um, yeah that's my lay-in and uh, let's uh, apply some color and values this very light green. Light green. It's a lot more yellow. It's much lighter still. And a lot of, uh, you know, as you can see, the palette I'm using is just literally a back of. Uh, of a, an art that is just with a, this plastic cover and I did not bring my pellet. I left it at home or I let the, actually I left it at the studio. So, uh, but you know, you can find a variety of options to, you know, make it work. So, so I'm gonna give a lot of greens, you know, just, uh, okay. That's good. And uh, we have blues. Let's let the blue shadow, blue shadow right here. Well, you know, because the overall composition uh, is fairly light compared with the darkest dark. I mean, even the shadow side, even, even the cast shadow of the flowers 
and the branches are fairly light in value in comparison with other subject matters. Uh, so I would say if between the value one through 10, the shadow is only about six or seven. So the darkest dark in my painting today is not gonna be super dark. It's not gonna be a super high contrast painting because of the lighting scenario. Um, so that's really nice green, I like that. And I will say I will make it cooler later, but uh, that's just an idea that I'm gonna go for. And of course the background is much darker in value than the foreground and the focal point. So I'm gonna start uh, just establishing some background colors. And I'm gonna jump around a lot because I don't want to just you know, try to fill it in part. And you know, I'm not filling it in, I'm applying value and specific ideas of colors and value. So I'm constantly <coughs> changing and calibrating the ideas I'm gonna go for. So I think that's the best part about, you know, Ella Prima paintings is that you're not sure how it's gonna turn out, but you have a big basic idea. You try to follow it as much as you can, but sometimes the idea can be changed, can be manipulated the way you want it. So that's always kind of nice. Um, so the beautiful roses, so just here and there, little pinkish color. And of course those pink will show through when I add a lot more uh, darker values um, later on. So I'm mixing some alizarin and white. And okay, the lighter, so meaning that I'm gonna little pieces of little shapes. There we go. And I won't keep it quick. I mean, I'm definitely not rushing myself to try to complete the painting, but I try to keep the energy going, try to, you know, keep my brush stroke light and, um, you know, make a little more distinguished decisions uh, not lingering too much on one part of painting because I want to, you know, move around. So keep the energy going. When I squint my eyes, I see, okay, there's some really nice color spots. And then I'm gonna work on the background because those color spots, it's not gonna, it's not, it's not gonna show through when the background is also still pinkish. So uh, I'm gonna work on that. Then I'm gonna make this really saturated here. Uh-huh. Of course, I'm gonna watch a little bit of edges. Uh, there's one. I squint. So I had to focus on my painting versus just the reference. I had to constantly remind myself the reference is just a reference. It's gonna give you an idea what you're gonna go for, but ultimately you have to focus on your painting which is that's the that's the that's the focal point so a little lighter maybe a little cadmium red okay that's good i like it so far the way it looks um so i'm gonna start uh focusing on the the background, which is, is a variety of nice colors. When you look at the background, you see fairly uh, this brown color. You know, if you just look at the first look, most people say, oh, that's brown. Well, what is brown? Brown is a combination of all colors. You know, it's a mud. So therefore, it, there's really all the colors are in that brown. So you have to pick and choose which color gonna be dominating that brownish color. So I will say a little more reddish, certain parts more light, super light purple. So it's almost like gray, but it's not a gray. You know, the gray color is literally black and white. That's makes gray. But uh, there's really no gray in the elements of our surroundings. So you have to consciously make a decision of what that 
super light and unsaturated color. You know, it's there's still it has its saturation, but except it's not nearly as saturated as other colors. So I would say certain part of the fence gonna be light purple, this warm, really light, and a little bit certain parts a little dark reddish and purplish and also you know i'm gonna push a little more blue uh i don't see much green but you know the green leaves gonna show up so that's gonna be create a nice contrast um between the fence and the leaves so that's gonna go for that idea okay let's keep going here and um a little bit just a little bit all right so, all right, I'm gonna start with the red first. And uh, I'm gonna desaturate the red with the green, which is, and I'm gonna implement a little bit of white. So what I'm ha I having here is a, you know, very desaturated red color. So that would be a good foundation to start my background ideas. So I'm gonna push in a little lighter still. And I'm gonna implement a little bit of green and a little. Oh, this is really saturated green. So that's that's not bad. So let's keep going on a little lighter, a little cooler, a little bit blue. And we're gonna go for purple, right? So I'm gonna add a little bit more alizarin, which is alizarin is part of uh, this warm red family. So this purplish idea. I squint my eyes. I see the warmth and cools and really just popping all over the place. So a little more cooler, a little warmer, a little lighter. All right, so I like that purple a lot. Uh, once again, I'm gonna desaturate the purple with a little bit of orange. So I have this really nice, you know, variety of tones, but I have a main dominant color, meaning it's more purplish. Um, so, so uh, the upper fence is in shadow, so it's a little warmer and a lot uh, darker in value. So I'm gonna try this. this. That's working, so that's good. And I don't mind some of the original colors showing through my mix because that really, I like that look. You know, it's, it keep it more lively. And um, just peeking through that right there. And there's a shadow here.
Okay, guys, and uh, thank you so much for watching. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe. Uh, leave me some comments and give me some critiques. And uh, I'll see you next time.